Good morning, everyone. Welcome to those who are new. I don't usually come in my B suit. This was my husband's idea because I was in my B suit um, just before um, this mindful moment. And he said, You should stay on it. <laughs> and I said, Oh my gosh. Anyway, no, I'm not going to stay in it all the time. But I thought I'd just say hello and um, <laughs> welcome everyone uh, from my B suit. Um, and I have just actually, we harvested honey last night and we um, mm -hmm. cleaned the, this, um, this, well, we took out the hive and I've actually never seen so many bees. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about it just now. But um, they, I think because the hive was actually so full, um, sorry, this is not my, so this is my one, but I'm just trying to find where the, so that's my bee hat. Um, so the hive was so full and so that there were so many bees and um we actually we took as many off you have a brush and you brush them off and we took out off the frames and took them out and put them into a box and then we put the box into the freezer and um and i actually had to we brushed off as many as we could but we had far many far more than we usually have on the on the frames and it's the first time i was doing it without my dad who um, I hope is with you, Mum, because he, I told him he, he must join because he'd be interested in the story. Yes, go call him. So it's the first time I was doing it without my dad. And I, um, I, we were doing it with actually our new owner, Julianne, who um, wants to take over the beekeeping, and Thomas, who's Teresa Cottrell's right hand man, who, so it's the first time I've ever done with Thomas either. And um, so, and then we had a little boy with us, a seven year old with us. And I'll tell you more about that a little bit later. Um, it actually was Gabriel Gore, our neighbors, um, Adrian Gore, and it was their son who's mad on bees. So I felt like I was holding quite a lot of space and quite a managed this whole thing. You know, bees can be scary and especially when they swarm um, and especially when you're disturbing them. And as I say, there were more bees than I've ever seen. And, um, when we put we put them into we put the frames that we'd harvested into a box and we put that box into the freezer because we freeze it overnight and there are always a few bees that get stuck in there we try and get rid of as many as possible but last night i had to still there were quite a lot of bees and i just put them in the freezer and closed it because i actually needed to keep us safe and um and then colin this morning while i was preparing for my mindful moment he came in and said to me I think you should have a look because he said because of the load shedding the freezer obviously hasn't been as cold as it should have normally be and he says the bees have all gathered into a big huddle and there are there's a whole big huddle of them sitting on the honey and he said if we leave them in there any longer they'll die and that feels very sad um but he says i think if you're going to do anything about it you have to do it now um and you have to get in your bee suit so i did that i got in my bee suit and I went, um, I took the big thing of honey, it's heavy, and took it all the way up to the hive, opened it, and the bees were a little bit lethargic because they had obviously cold and huddled together. This is one case that load shedding has worked in our favor. And I brushed them off and sent them back to the hive, and I took out each frame and brushed it off, put it back into the hive, and um, I put the, the honey back into the box, and the bees went back to the hive, and I took it back, and now we've had virtually no casualties so um so that i will tell you a little bit more about that story and how it's so relevant to what's going on in the world um shortly but i have um i don't know if my nose is quite shiny but i have a nasty um i've had such like hay fever because we're moving and so there's lots of stuff that we're taking out of our garage and dusting off and we've obviously with all the seasonal stuff and it was meant to rain today we're all praying for rain um, and so I've been using the correct X on my nose. Um, so it doesn't look too shiny, but I think that's because my lights aren't very bright, but it works amazingly. And um, yeah, for those who um, are new here, welcome. And we just check in with what the moon is doing and the planets are doing. And then we do a little bit of a mindful moment. And it's lovely to have the old and the new. Um, and so this, there's a new moon on Sunday, it's Sunday the 25th of September, and it's new moon in Libra, which we all know the symbol for Libra, it's the scales, and it's all about balance and finding balance in the world and balance in our life. 
And for those again who are new, I come from a very Christian background. I was very skeptical of astrology. Um, and it's something that I've learned more and more about um, over lockdown times the last two years, and it's made more and more sense. And two amazing women that I follow and talk about are so wise and um, wonderful, and they bring so much sense to me, to the, to the world. One is Pam Gregory, and one is um, Heather Ensworth. And I was really listening to Heather Ensworth's talk on this new moon in um, Libra. And she said, firstly, and I don't know, actually, I was going to try and show it to you, her little visual. I did a screenshot. Let me see if it's come through. Um, no, no, I don't think it has. Anyway, she she showed a screenshot of, um, oh, I will actually show you this. Um, last night, okay, let me go to share screen. This is... This is us in our bee suits last night, harvesting the honey. That's Julianne, the new owner, Thomas, myself, and little Gabe. I ordered a child's bee suit for him. Uh, thankfully, he's seven. He didn't mind being in a purple flowery thing. I was a bit horrified to see it when I, um, when it arrived. <laughs> um, and I was hoping another photo was going to upload, but it obviously hasn't. Um, so um the the moon and how she shows it is amazing and then the moon and the sun so i really encourage you if you're interested to look at her um her latest youtube i'll put the link below um the recording and the moon and the sun are in virgo and they literally are sitting on her wing at um now how they sit are in the star constellations and i love using the app sky view light because you can hold it up and you can actually see the constellation and you can see that the, the moon and well not the sun at the same time but you can see the moon sitting in that constellation and that's all about being of service and then libra is all about being in balance and being in harmony and especially in our interpersonal and one-on-one -on -one relationships and the whole message that she comes with is having faith and trust and being open into how we can move in new directions and new ways of being and to be aware of how these are in harmony with ourselves and our relationships and how we live on earth, how we are on earth. Um, and that really resonates with some of us who are doing our spring shed at the moment, because we're learning to, to open to our intuition about what's right for ourselves and to our bodies. Um, and this is what this time is all about. This is what this um, new moon in Libra is all about. Um, which I had no idea when we planned the shed, but it's, this is how uh, we are so supported. It's all about um, Libra, the new moon in Libra is all about our connection with God, with spirit, with working with our inner knowing and inner guidance and the wisdom of our bodies. Um, and again, this is what we're doing in the shed. So there are many planets in retrograde at the moment. Again, this meant nothing to me a year or two ago. And Mercury is in retrograde from the 10th to the 30th of September. And Mercury is all about like techie glitches. So for those of you who probably like me have had many tech glitches in the last week or so, um, it's been driving me mad, including when I hosted a whole lot of people at our, at our Deterra evening convention watching evening the other day. And I mean, we were laughing by the end because every time I went near the, the computer, it just actually made it worse. Like I, I would I would cause it to glitch even more. I was trying to get it to stream on the TV. And, and it's just like, and it just is an indication, I actually take heed and step back. And so I think that, I think that all this flip and load shedding is a bit of mercury retrograde as well. And let's just take heed and step back and not fight it and, and get frustrated. And I, like I, I was trying to fight it when we had the, this Deterra watch evening and sort it out and fix it. And I'm going to get the better of it. Eventually I surrendered. I mean, there was nothing I could do. And we actually had a lovely evening with what it was, which was not perfect, but it was what it was. And um, anyway, many other planets are also will move out of retrograde um, between now and the end of January. And it's a time that it's it's a time for us. It's a reflection or an indication. It's time for us to be more inward facing and more self reflective, um, and not take direct action. Think about um, how you might be working with these energies in a different way. Um, and so, with, with Mercury, we want to be more reflective and intuitive and inward, and working not from our left logical brain, um, but from our right intuitive, creative, um, connecting brain. 
Um, and maybe that's what all the tech glitches are giving us that message. We should just put it down, put it down, stay away, turn within, pray, meditate, reflect, go inward and trust our intuition um, and take time to pray and to turn inwards and to connect with God and the divine and spirit. So um, every, new, every new moon is a time for um, turning inwards, for slowing down. I often talk about it in my feminine wisdom courses and many, many times here on our mindful moments, how in nature we see the, new, the full moon and it's like a spotlight and animals are active and moving around and the whole bush is alive. And we see it in the tides, the spring tides, how huge they are. But the new moon... Uh, the animals are much quieter, they retreat. It's a time for sleeping, for turning inwards, for being calm, for restoring our balance. Because if we can um, show up in, I don't know what you said there, Zoe, but you just made me laugh. <laughs> I'll, I'll see your chat just now. Um, if, we can, if we can restore and, and, and connect with ourselves in the new, new moon, we can show up more in the full moon. And the same with our menstrual cycles. When we can rest, uh, connect with ourselves and slow down, in our men's time of menses, our period, then we can show up in other times of the month instead of just trying to push on through all of them. So, but this new moon, because it's a new moon in Libra, which is all about balance, it really is a time for reflection and to attune to ways that we are out of balance in our lives and in relationships and our bodies. So again, this is part of what we're doing in the shed. Um, and the energies of this new moon can really help us to tune into what we need to know and to have faith and trust that what we're learning now and the lessons we're learning and the things that we want to shift, we can shift and we can move in new directions and come more into harmony and balance. So it's like the whole solar system is, is confirming um, and helping us and aiding us along the way. And Heather Ensworth also talked about the global systems that are breaking down and they're breaking down so we can transform and break through. And I mean, wasn't, isn't the English monarchy one of the main ruling systems for the last hundreds of years? And I think with the death of the queen, we'll never see another monarch like her. And I don't think the British royalty will, or English royalty will ever be like the same again. And we'll, it will be interesting to see how it transforms. But um, but there's a breaking down so we can transform and break through. And um, there's also, now it gets even more um, woo-woo, but it's a theme that comes up, it's not woo-woo, it's that Saturn and Uranus are in a 90 degree square. And this has been talked about since the start of COVID, like literally the start of COVID lockdown was them in the square and they're kind of having this battle. Again, I knew nothing about it, but these wise women are really amazing. Um, and so if you think about lockdowns, it was such a thing of control, controlling the people, telling the people what to do, and no one, we, no one had a voice beyond that. And Saturn is all about our old structures, our, our old way of doing the hierarchical top-down approach, um, power and control. And Uranus is all about the people, the people speaking, the people ruling themselves, the people a new way. And so they've kind of been in this little tussle. And... Um, and so, and she's saying, and we're moving more into Uranus as we move into this age of Aquarius, which I also thought sounded so way out there, you know, the song and everything, but it is, it's, it's, it's the solar system. Um, it's like the map. And so she's saying, we're seeing new ways of living and moving into community and awakening and collaborating and caring and sharing. We're just trying to cling to the patterns of the past and increase our power over our hierarchy, our authority and control which are all Saturn and I just see so much of that's going and she's going on and she says and again things like the shed our doTERRA tribes our feminine wisdom communities those are all those communities that we're creating and I'm sure you're creating other communities in your own ways your bible studies or your book clubs your your women's groups your your own um your own spiritual communities and your own religious groups this is going to become more and more important and so see where that starts to come up in your life um, and be aware of the struggle that's going on between the two in the collective, but we mustn't get caught in fear. We need to stay grounded in our faith that we'll be guided by the energies of the earth and the sky into new ways of being. And we can really trust this because it can feel scary. And I know that I felt quite scared by all this control and authority and all the AI stuff that's coming in and all the face recognition and all the, you know, I see a bigger, darker picture in all of this um, of what, 
where we've been led to of this whole very authoritarian, very controlling um, thing. And for me, it was very comforting to hear saying that that is coming almost to its peak now, but we are in a, we're moving into a period that's about increasing expansive human consciousness and remembering that we're part of the oneness that is one, that's our planet and our earth. And we are part of nature. We're not as in control as we thought we would. We thought we could control nature. We thought we could control life. We thought we can, and that, yes, we can control elements, but there's so much we can't control. And we're part of this cosmic and, and, and the planetary um, energies. And we can either be part of it or and flow with it, or we can resist it. And, and that will be the harder way because those, the, those trying for increased global control will eventually fail. So it's time to step back and reflect at this new moon and honor the shifts that are happening in nature as we shift into spring and into summer. Um, the shifts that are happening in our bodies, um, the shifts that are happening in our minds and in our hearts, the shifts that are happening globally, just acknowledging them and sitting with them more, not acting on them and tuning into our dreams and into our intuition, not overthinking, not doing, but actually just putting that down for a while and percolating it's that percolating and dreaming kind of feeling. Um, write down your dreams this weekend, particularly, um, and just tune into what comes up and you don't have to act on it. It's like a, that delicious like phase of percolating something new, like in a pregnancy or like when you have an idea and you just, you're formulating it in your mind. And we can have periods of not knowing and great anxiety in this. And that's okay because we can hold ourselves with compassion. We are being guided and to know that there is a bigger picture and it's okay to feel a little bit anxious sometimes, but to really then act compassionately to ourselves when doing it and give ourselves an Epsom salts bath or go and lie on the grass or go for a walk in nature. And those sort of things that hold ourselves. And to surrender to the not knowing, it's okay not to know and surrender to trusting the messages from earth and sky that we are being guided. Um, and so that, yeah, this is all Heather Ensworth on her new moon, September 2022, 22, navigating stormy times um, held in the currents of the cosmos. So this is our time, our mindful moment is our time to turn inwards and to slow down and to be like nature and with nature. And I am aware that I'm talking a lot this morning, but I just want to really tell you a quite a profound story for me. And I share this with you as an intimate group um, because I am going to disclose names and I am going to, it's a story I'd like to tell you to, to feed the understanding of what I've just explained. Um, but this is a story that's precious to me. So I would be, ask you to be careful to how you share it with others. Um, so we did the bees last night, um, as I said, and we have, um, our, our new owners, Julianne, wanted to come and um, Thomas, who's, as I said, Teresa's um, right-hand man was helping me to do it. And I've done it many times with my, my dad. And actually, so our neighbors are um, Adrian and Lauren Gore um, and Adrian's obviously head of Discovery Health. And we've had a very good relationship with them over the years. It's become a little bit more tense from my side I don't think he's probably been aware of it although he did read a lot of my letters certainly in the beginning and he actually sent me messages about them and commented on them very positively but as discovery became more um, hard on their mandates I became I struggled more with my relationship with them and my connection with them anyway we organized a, a neighbor's tea on Sunday to say goodbye to our neighbors and to um, introduce them to Julianne and Alistair and um, he popped in very briefly and um, we talked about the bees and how we were going to harvest the bees. And Gabriel, his son, is mad on bees. And we've tried to, for years, organize a little bee talk here and things. And it hasn't sort of come to pass. So he said, could he come? Could he bring him? So I said, yes, sure. So then I was in touch with him and I sent him some information. I told him how the bee Queen's beekeeper um, had gone to tell her that the, the, the bees that the queen had died and they put black ribbons around the hives and and that you have to talk to the bees and I mean he came back and said I'm astounded I, I've never thought of it like this I've always thought of it in like a very utilitarian sort of way so little Gabriel and Adrian came over last night and um, I put on our palm roller which is um, 
for those of you who have oils, that's lavender, peppermint, and frankincense on all of us. And I find it really helps calm the bees and calms us. And then Gabriel came and, and Colin and Adrian sat, stood chatting and Gabriel came with us and he stood a little bit away, but in his little bee seat and he, he watched the whole thing and he wanted to know and he was asking questions and I mean, it was amazing. He even taught me some stuff. Um, and then Thomas said to me, what's the name of your queen? And I said, well, I don't know. We don't have a name for our queen. Should we have a name for the queen? And he said, yes. So we decided to name her Elizabeth. Um, and as I said, there were so many bees. So it was quite, I was a bit anxious because I did have quite precious, um, precious cargo on board with Julianne. She'd never done bees before. And Gabriel, who was, who was quite, I felt quite a responsibility. And I was quite nervous with all these bees. And for those who weren't at the beginning of the session, the reason why I'm in my bee suit now is that I actually, I had to close up the box that we put all the, high, the frames into and put it into the freezer. Um, and then actually quite a lot of, because of the load shedding, they hadn't, the bees hadn't frozen, but there were so many bees. And I had luckily then took them out this morning and put them back in their hive. But Adrian sent me a message last night to say that was the most exceptional evening. We just loved it. Uh, you've lit a fire for our little Gabriel. He's just telling us all about his experience and we're so honored and so blessed and thank you. And, um, you know, we're looking at our honey in a new light and I think Gabriel will come and have a look today at some of the frames and things. And this for me is such a symbol of this because it's all about connecting with nature, being one with nature, understanding nature. And this little seven year old who is a very large lamaki, Lauren only had him when she was 50. Um, she came to see me for pregnancy physio and things. Um, is bringing him and he said to Colin you know I, I don't know anything about nature I'm so disconnected from nature and his young son and he has this very top-down authoritarian he's a symbol of the top-down authoritarian structure hierarchy and and I'm more of a symbol of the the feminine and the collaborative and the connecting and that's what bees are they are feminine energy and the, it's all the ladies and we talk to them and we we told them I introduced them to the new neighbors the new owners and to their neighbor and you know we did that the whole time and we kept them calm and and Gabriel was part of that and that's something that he will take with him and so it's just been so symbolic for me of this exactly the dissolving of the hierarchy and the moving to community and, and connection and collaboration so yeah we our focus is on balance and balancing um because there's no such thing as balance um there's only balancing um and so finding it between us so in this moment we are going to find a little bit of our balance balancing and i invite you just to take in the world around you if you can see out the window look at the lights and the colors in the sky in the leaves in the clouds and then slowly drop your gaze and allow your eyes to close and we're going to keep it short we're going to keep it to half past seven anyway we'll just keep a very short meditation so um, those who have to go off at half past seven, I will end it by half past seven. So you can relax into these next few minutes. And just listening to the sound of the bell, just allow yourself to drop. Connecting with your feet on the earth. Raising up out of your pelvic bowl so that your spine extends up towards the sky like a tree branches reaching up and just feeling suspended, grounded between earth and heaven, connected to both and part of both. And just allowing the words of this poem to settle on you. Dear friend, stand tall and proud, sink your roots deeply into the earth, reflect the light of a greater source, Think long-term, go out on a limb. Remember your place among all living things. Embrace with joy the changing seasons, for each yields its own abundance, the energy and birth of spring, the growth and contentment of summer, the wisdom to let go of leaves in the fall, the rest and quiet renewal of winter. Feel the wind and the sun and delight in their presence. 
Look up at the moon that shines down upon you and the mystery of the stars at night. Seek nourishment from the good things in life. Simple pleasures, earth, fresh air, light. Be content with your natural beauty. Drink plenty of water. Let your limbs sway and dance in the breezes. Be flexible. Remember your roots and enjoy the view. And so as we sit here in this moment, just allowing your feet to connect with the earth beneath you, whether you're sitting in your car, on your bed, in a chair, just sensing the energy of your body sinking into your feet and connecting down into the earth, spreading beyond the physical outline of your feet, the boundary of your skin, just noticing a deeper grounding and a deeper settling, a rootedness in the earth beneath you. Feeling as if there are roots spreading out from your feet, grounding you deep into the earth, holding you and giving you strength and support. and at the same time nourishing you and feeding you and allowing yourself to receive that nourishment and that food. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to try so hard. You don't have to control anything. Just receive. And then uncurling your rest of your body, your spine, out of your pelvic bowl, out of your, the base that supports you, your pelvis, your buttocks, your thighs. From this solid, solidity and, and holding, allowing yourself to uncurl and open up, perhaps softening your shoulders, expanding your chest, lifting up the crown of your head towards this vast, vast sky above us. The sky that holds the moon, the stars, the sun, the planets that we are very much part of and connected to. And so the balance between the two, being fed by the light from the sun and the stars, uplifted and nourished, Again, we don't have to try so hard. We don't have to try and control. We don't have to be better, do better, try harder. We can just receive this light, this nourishment, this love. From nature, from the creator, the whole earth is here to support us. And dropping then into our heart space, into our breath, noticing our breath as we come in and out of our heart space. And cultivating a feeling of gratitude for this moment, for the support of both earth and heaven, for the connection to nature, for the connection to each other, for the communities that we are building. And just expanding this sensation of gratitude in our heart space out beyond our heart space, out to the names and faces on the screen in this community, our friends and family, our loved ones beyond this. And as we do this, we listen to this poem again and pray this for ourselves and for our loved ones. Dear friend, Stand tall and proud. Sink your roots deeply into the earth. Reflect the light of a greater source. Think long-term. Go out on a limb. 
Remember your place among all living beings. Embrace with joy the changing seasons, for each yields its own abundance, the energy and birth of spring, the growth and contentment of summer, the wisdom to let go of leaves in the fall, the rest and quiet renewal of winter and of the new moon time. Feel the wind and the sun and delight in their presence. Look up at the moon that shines down upon you and the mystery of the stars at night. Seek nourishment from the good things in life, simple pleasures, earth, fresh air, light. Be content with your natural beauty. Drink plenty of water. Let your limbs sway and dance in the breezes. Be flexible. Remember your roots. Enjoy the view. And so in this moment, I hold great gratitude for all of you in this community. Thank you for encouraging and inspiring me. And thank you for, for being here every Tuesday so that I can join with you in these sessions. And I wish you a blessed and beautiful day as you go out into the world. Namaste. The spirit in me sees the spirit in you. Thank you, everyone. If you'd like to unmute and share or ask questions, please do. If you'd like, need to rush off, we understand. If you'd like, an iPhone, I don't know who you are, but someone says, read, be more like a tree. More like a tree. Please read an excellent novel about how trees influence our lives called The Overstory. Oh, thank you. Well, please mm -hmm. let us know who you are. I'd love to hear more about it. And thank you. I'd love to read that. Uh, thank you, Hilda. Thanks for joining us. Nikki, this so um, speaks to me because my birthday is on the 4th. And um, I'm a Libran. Oh, and over. yeah, and all about balance and seeing both sides of the story always mm. um that's very much so, what you do in your life isn't the truth mm, that's mm. How, where you were born in libra yeah. and balance and yeah. bringing balance to other people as part of your life work mm. so very special for me mm. lovely thank mm. you good luck with the move thank and you. lots of love yes. i didn't say that but i I will let you know about next week, whether we have a mindful moment, because we might be moving in on the Monday or the Tuesday. Oh, We're just mm. waiting to see whether the floors are ready. We'll find out today. But I'm going down on Saturday, and then um, the movers will either come Monday morning or Tuesday morning. So I'll let you know. Super. So thank you. Thank you. Mm. Thanks for your message. So I'll let, yeah, I'll let you know. I'll be in touch. Okay. But much love to you all. Thank you so much. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Anyone else want to say anything? Thanks, love. Have a good day. Thanks. Thank you, ma'am. Please tell dad I missed him last night and I missed him this morning. Mm -hmm. and you'll have to catch the recording. Oh, I'm sure he'd love to, to hear. He was concerned because he said the hive would be very wild and uh, it, was full, but it was calm but yeah it was full because uh, yeah so let him know yeah him. no I'll definitely I'll phone Please. him Have yeah a good day. Thank Hi. you so much. And Caroline, you've just joined us, but you've missed the good stuff because we're about to leave. And so you'll have to catch the recording. It will be on my website shortly. Much love everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.